There are tons of mistakes that people make when investing in real estate, especially if they're brand new and uninformed. But let's not get that mistaken. I've seen people in real estate their entire lives still making the same mistakes over and over again. Some of them are so basic and when I lay them out right now, you're going to say, damn, how could I be so stupid? But thankfully, you have me, Alan Avgi, here for you right now. Okay, that was a little bit too much. But I'm seriously here right now and I'm going to outline these mistakes to hopefully make you guys better make you fix these things and get you on the right path even if you're just getting started. Today, I'm going to outline the top five mistakes that I've seen in the real estate investing industry. But the first thing that I'm going to tell you to do is click that like button, click subscribe, share this with a friend, drop a comment, show some love because it's 2022 and we're going to come in hotter than ever. No one's going to stop us this year and I hope we can provide as much value as possible. So let's get straight into it. Let's go. We're in Houston right now, walking our new 56 million crazy property here. It starts down there. We got a lot of billion dollar man. All right, enough talk, enough music. What are the top five real estate investor mistakes happening right now? I'm going to start with a really heavy one. I don't make this mistake, just to be clear, but I see it happening every single day in this business, and that is underestimating yourself. Most real estate investors totally underestimate their potential. And it might sound like, oh no, I don't underestimate myself. But if you're doing one house, you might be telling yourself, I don't underestimate myself at all. But if you're doing one house, one unit, and you're having a tough time scaling from there, I'm going to be straight up and honest with you right now, you're underestimating your potential. You've got to step it up and there's many ways you can do that. There's people that have been in real estate their entire lives and they have 10 houses. Then there's people that have been in real estate for five years and they're buying 10 houses a month. Clearly, both people have taken a different approach to the business and you know which guy you want to be. So if you're doing one house, you gotta figure out how to multiply that and turn it into five, 10, 100 houses as fast as you can. The management is the same, you just gotta scale up the team. So don't be that guy. Don't be in the business for the rest of your life just to live a normal life and lifestyle. You wanna build something that'll give you residual income for the rest of your life if you're building a rental business. If you're building a flip business, you wanna be doing more flips with good margins and a good team to help you live a better and healthier and wealthier life. Also, buying cheap houses doesn't mean that you're getting a good deal all the time. If it's cheap, it's cheap for a reason. You're taking on that challenge and you're going to have to turn it into something more expensive than what it is in order to get money out of it. You're going to have to add value somehow. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these deals. Sometimes you might find a needle in the haystack, but most of the time that's not the case and it's okay to hit base hits and doubles. Not every deal is going to be a grand slam but that's fine. You're going to grow in this business one way or another if you stay realistic. So stay realistic and don't try and hit grand slams across the board. It's okay. Number three, and this one guys is really important. I've seen people lose hundreds of thousands of dollars by doing this. Don't fix up a property just to your liking that won't cater the market. I know that was a lot. Let's break it into layman terms. This is going to be easy. Don't renovate a house or a building to be exactly what you want if the market isn't going to pay you what you put into it or more. That's really important because at the end of the day, I care about investing in deals that'll give me a better return. I don't care about the marble that's chosen, the siding or the colors. That's all figured out by what the market wants. If board and batten siding is what's going on houses for resale, then I'm putting board and batten siding on there. If you wanna be really creative, you can do that, but be cost efficient. You don't wanna pour in a ton of money into a property just to lose it because that's not what the market's going to demand. Let's use some brief examples here. If you buy a house for $100,000 and you have a $50,000 renovation budget, don't spend $100,000 making it the way you like if the houses are selling for $175,000. Because at the end of the day, no matter how much you love the house, I doubt somebody's going to feel the same way and you're probably going to walk away losing some money. Be smart and be safe with your investments. 
Renovate properties to what the market wants, not what you want. Number four, stop trying to do everything by yourself. You're not good at everything and you're never going to be. Oh brother, this guy stinks! One man can't do everything. If you're a plumber, you're a plumber. You're not a roofer. You don't know how to roof. So hire a roofer to do what he has to do. Otherwise, you're just leaving yourself to get into more headaches and digging yourself a hole that you might not be able to get out of if you went in over your head. So don't try and do everything. Hire the right people to do what they're supposed to do. Sometimes it costs more money, but that's okay. It's part of the business. Mistake number five. Don't spend money that you don't have yet. Okay, let me reemphasize that. Don't spend money that you think is going to come in and that hasn't come in yet because you never know what's going to happen. Your house could burn down tomorrow and you were expecting a rent check that you just put out into a new Gucci jacket. But don't buy things that you don't need and spend money that you don't have yet. So there you have it, a quick dive into the top five mistakes that I've seen in the real estate industry. If you're guilty of these mistakes, it's okay. I bet you can fix it and I hope I brought it to your attention. If you haven't gotten into real estate yet, this is going to give you a clear path of things that you shouldn't do when getting into real estate. I hope you guys appreciated this video. Drop a comment of mistakes that you've seen happen in real estate or just send some love, like this post, share it with your friends and I hope I provided you guys some value. Until next time, my friends, don't make these mistakes. Peace. Oh,